As the world speaks less of Jesus Christ, let us speak more of him. As our true colors as his disciples are revealed, many around us will be prepared to listen. As we share the light we have received from him, his light and his transcendent saving power will shine on those willing to open their hearts. Jesus said, I come as a light into the world. Nothing lifts my desire to speak of Christ more than visualizing his return. While we do not know when he will come, the events of his return will be breathtaking. He will come in the clouds of heaven in majesty and glory with all his holy angels, not just a few angels, but all his holy angels. These are not the cherry-cheeked cherubim painted by Raphael found on our Valentine cards. These are the angels of the centuries. The angels sent to shut the mouths of lions, to open prison doors, to announce his long-awaited birth, to comfort him in Gethsemane, to assure his disciples at his ascension, and to open the glorious restoration of the gospel. Can you imagine being caught up to meet him, whether on this side or the other side of the veil? That is his promise to the righteous. This amazing experience will mark our souls forever. The Spirit made clear to me that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is uniquely empowered and commissioned to accomplish the necessary preparations for the Lord's second coming. Indeed, it was restored for that purpose. Can you find anywhere else a people who embrace the present era as the prophesied dispensation of the fullness of times in which God has purposed to gather together all things, one thing, all things together in Christ. If you don't find here a community intent on accomplishing what needs to be accomplished for both the living and the dead to prepare for that day, if you don't find here an organization willing to commit vast amounts of time and funds to the gathering and preparation of a covenant people ready to receive the Lord, you won't find it anywhere. Speaking to the Church in 1831, the Lord declared, The keys of the kingdom of God are committed unto man on the earth, and from thence shall the gospel roll forth unto the ends of the earth. Call upon the Lord that his kingdom may go forth upon the earth, that the inhabitants thereof may receive it and be prepared for the days to come, in the which the Son of Man shall come down in heaven, clothed in the brightness of his glory, to meet the kingdom of God which is set up on the earth. For those who have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to feel more than ever before, we require to confront the reality that we are getting ever closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. True. Great difficulties yet await those on the earth at his return. But in this regard, the faithful need not fear. Now I quote for a moment from the Church's Gospel topics under the heading, The Second Coming of Jesus Christ. When the Savior comes again, he will come in power and glory to claim the earth is his kingdom. His second coming will mark the beginning of the millennium. The second coming will be a fearful, mournful time for the wicked, but it will be a day of peace for the righteous. The Lord declared, They that are wise and have received the truth and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, they shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. And the earth shall be given unto them for an inheritance, and they shall multiply and wax strong, and their children shall grow up without sin unto salvation. For the Lord shall be in their midst, and his glory shall be upon them, and he will be their king and their lawgiver. 
This great and last dispensation is building steadily to its climax. Zion on earth being joined with Zion from above at the Savior's glorious return. The Church of Jesus Christ is commissioned to prepare and is preparing the world for that day. And so this Easter, let us truly celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that it portends, His return to reign for a thousand years of peace, a righteous judgment and perfect justice for all, the immortality of all who ever lived upon this earth, and the promise of eternal life. Christ's resurrection is the ultimate assurance that all will be put right. Let us be about building up Zion to hasten that day. Our faith grows as we anticipate the glorious day of the Savior's return to the earth. The thought of His coming stirs my soul. It will be breathtaking, the scope and grandeur, the vastness and magnificence will exceed anything mortal eyes have ever experienced. In that day, He will not come wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger, but He will appear in the clouds of heaven, clothed with power and great glory and with all the holy angels. We will hear the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The sun and the moon will be transformed and stars will be hurled from their places. You and I, or those who follow us, the saints from every quarter of the earth shall be quickened and caught up to meet Him. And those who have died in righteousness, they too will be caught up to meet Him in the midst of heaven. Then a seemingly impossible experience. All flesh, the Lord says, shall see me together. How will it happen? We do not know. But I testify it will happen exactly as prophesied. We will kneel in reverence, and the Lord shall utter His voice, and all the ends of the earth shall hear it. It shall be the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and then the Lord, the Savior, shall stand in the midst of His people. There will be unforgettable reunions with the angels of heaven and the saints upon the earth. But most importantly, as Isaiah declares, all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God, and He shall reign over all flesh. In that day, the skeptics will be silent, for every ear shall hear, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior and Redeemer of the world. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ invites us to take the covenant path back home to our heavenly parents and be with those we love. He invites us to come, follow me. Now, as president of his church, I plead with you who have dis distanced yourselves from the church, and with you who have not yet really sought to know that the Savior's church has been restored, do the spiritual work to find out for yourselves. And please do it now. Time is running out. I testify that God lives. Jesus is the Christ. His Church and the fullness of His gospel have been restored to bless our lives with joy here and hereafter. I so testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>